Let's practice evaluating a couple of quadratic functions. Here's our first function. We have negative x squared plus 7x plus 10. And the first example, we want to evaluate f of 5. And so what that means is everywhere that you have an x, we're going to replace it with a 5. So I see an x here and here. So we'll take negative 5 squared plus 7 times 5 plus 10. Now this is one example right off the bat that a lot of students make a mistake about. Um, they would look at this, especially the first term, they would look at the first term and they'd say negative 5 squared is uh, 25, negative 5 times negative 5. That's incorrect actually, because remember your order of operations, exponents come before multiplication with this negative 1 coefficient out front. So we would actually take 5 squared, which is 25, and then we would leave it negative, or make it negative. And then we'd have plus 35, and then plus 10. So negative 25 plus 35 is 10, and 10 plus 10 makes 20. So f of 5 would be 20. And then let's also evaluate f of negative 2. That means we will take negative of negative 2 quantity squared because I'm taking the x out and putting the negative 2 as a packet in there in parentheses. Plus 7 times negative 2 plus 10. Negative 2 squared is 4, so we'd have negative 4, negative 4. 7 times 2 is minus 14 and then plus 10. Negative 4 minus 14 would make negative 28, and negative 28 plus 10 would make negative 18. So that would be our y value for f of negative 2. So we've evaluated this function at these two values, and just to be clear what these answers are meaning, uh, uh, this 520, that's an ordered pair x comma y that would be on the graph of this quadratic function. Um, and then same thing with this guy. When x is negative 2 and the y is negative 18, this is an x-y value ordered pair that's on the graph of this parabola also. So these are a couple points on this guy's graph. All right, let's end with one last example. h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 30t plus 100. You'll see a lot of examples with h's and t's, especially when you're talking about quadratic functions, because what this is modeling is the height of a projectile at a certain time. You see, if you were to graph this parabola here, it would look something like this. It would look like something we shot up in the air and then came down and, and hit the ground. So you'll see a lot of quadratic functions represented by h of t. So let, let's do these two here. What's h of 0? That means take the t's out and plug in 0. Negative 16 times 0 squared plus 30 times 0 plus 100. So we'd get 0 plus 0 plus 100. That would, of course, equal 100. Now, before we go to the next example, let's think about what does that mean exactly? Well, if this is the height, h, of a projectile at time t and we plugged in time zero, then what do you think 100 represents? Well, that's going to represent the initial height. That's the height when t is zero. This is a, a, a particular height. And so this projectile was tossed or launched from a height of 100 feet or 100 meters or something like that uh, up in the air. And then it went up and then it came down and hit the ground. Let's try the same thing with h of 2. We'll take um, negative 16 times 2 squared plus 30 times 2 plus 100. 2 squared is 4, and 4 times negative 16 is negative 64, plus 30 times 2, which is 60, plus 100. And then negative 64 plus 60 would make negative 4 plus 100. And then final answer, negative 4 plus 100 would be 96. So what that means is after two seconds, it's back down to 96 feet in the air. So this means it must have gone up in the air for a short period of time 
and then it's coming back down and eventually it'll be less than 100 feet like 96 and then 80 feet and 70 feet and 20 feet and 10 feet and then bam it's going to hit the ground so we see this height is constantly changing depending on time and so the height at two seconds was 96 feet or meters or something to that effect.